الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد a question for the sisters and it's a rhetorical question or it's a any I don't want to answer but I want you to ask yourself what are your rights as a parent what are the rights of the parent upon the child a parent will say that my right upon my child is that they keep the ties of the womb. My right upon my child is that they treat me well. My right upon my child is that they do not mistreat me. They do not mistreat me in anything that can be considered disrespect or with anything that can be considered disrespect. to the point some of the salaf they said ma barra walidayhi man ahadda ilayhim ilayhim anadhar he said that a person has not shown al birr he has not shown kindness to his parents who gives them a sharp look it's not permissible for your child no matter what age they are to give you a dirty look it's not permissible for your child to suck their teeth at you or smack their lips it's not permissible for your child to raise their voice at you it's not permissible for your child if you were to call them to pretend like they don't hear you it's not permissible for them it's not permissible for them if they're at the age of al-mas'uliyah the age of the bulugh the age of puberty where their actions are being written for or against them then those things are considered sins and they are tremendous sins and in some cases they can be from the major sins the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that there are three la yadkhulul jannah there are three that will not enter the paradise لا يدخل الجنة ثلاثة Three people will not enter the paradise. المرترجلة or المترجلة rather any the woman who acts like a man. العاقل والديه the child who misbehaves and ill-treats his parents or a person who mistreats his parents. والديوث الذي يقر لأهله الخبث and the pimp who allows his family to do khubuth who allows his female family members to commit zina fornication and reprehensible acts of the likes those three will not enter the jannah and surrounded by a society that is calling the women to act like men and the men to have no jealousy for their woman and the children to mistreat their parents and so they have to and you know these things and warn their children from falling into these things so the point is that the parent knows their rights over their children and you have a marital dispute between a man and a woman a husband and a wife you find that both parties involved 
know what their rights are. They know what their rights are. The wife, she knows she has a right. Lisukna. Laha haqqu sukna. She has a right to be sheltered, to be given a residence. And if she wants her own residence, meaning she doesn't want to live in the same home with her mother-in-law, father-in-law, and she doesn't want to live in the home any of her co-wife, and she has a right to have her own residence. She knows her rights. She knows that she has a right to have her bills paid. She has a right to have her food bought for her. She has a right and to be dealt with kindly and gently. She has a right not to be harmed or abused physically, emotionally, or verbally by her husband. Those are her rights. She knows her rights. A husband, he definitely knows his rights. He has a right to intimacy. He has a right that his wife obeys him. And that which is not disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's mandatory for her to obey him. If he asks her to cook him something, if he asks her to do something, she has to do it. It's mandatory upon her. So everybody knows their rights. So I want to ask a question. What is the right of your children? What are your children's rights? I wonder how many Muslims don't know the answer to this question. And you find the Muslims, mashallah, we have a lot of kids. You know, especially for the people who, and you have more than one wife, you see they have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, some people twelve, thirteen, some people even more than that. A lot of children. A lot of children. Hey, they're, they're, they're baby factories. If you were to ask the Muslims, these Muslims, any who are scaring the kufar to death because they're reproducing faster than them, the kufar are afraid that the Muslims will soon become a majority in many places in Europe, and that the population of the Muslims are going to and they take over the kufar because the Muslims reproduce quicker than the kufar because the kufar and he practice all sorts of birth control and abortion and so on and so forth. And the Muslims, mashallah, they have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the Muslims, hey, they're reproducing at a quick rate, much quicker than the kufars, and the kufars are scared to death. So we see the Muslims having all these kids. You see the Muslim sister in the grocery store, she has a small army with her. A small army of young boys. A small army any of children of any different sexes. With her in the grocery store, acting a fool. Right? Just like all of our kids acting a fool in the grocery store. You see the Muslims, everywhere you go, the Muslims, they got a lot of kids. If you were to ask the Muslims, what are the rights of your children upon you? I wonder how many Muslims know the answer to that question. I can give you the correct answer. Because like I said, we know our rights. We know our rights. We know how our children are supposed to be treating us. We know how our wives are supposed to be treating us. We know how our husbands are supposed to be treating us. And so on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيْلُ لِلْمُتَفِّثِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا كَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ ألا يظن أولئك أنهم مبعوثون ليوم عظيم يوم يقوم الناس لرب العالمين. It's terrifying. ويل للمتففين. Woe be to the mutaffifin. And it's those that when they measure for the people, when they ask the people to measure for them, when they do business for the people, they want their measure in full. They want the people to give them their right in full. When it comes to dealing with them, giving measure away for them, giving them their rights, they fall short. Don't these people think, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't these ones think, these people who demand their rights in full and don't give others their rights, don't they think that they will be resurrected for a yawmin azim? For a tremendous and terrifying day. 
a day when mankind will stand to be judged in front of the Rabbil Alameen, in front of the Lord of the Universe, Jalla wa'ala, wa taqaddasat asma'u, tabaraku wa ta'ala. So if a Muslim asks themselves, what do they know about their rights? You see the people, they complain, they say, such and such and such and such brother, or such and such sister mistreated me. They said this or they, or they did this. They know the rights of the Muslim and the rights of brotherhood. They know it's a general principle. I know it's a general principle. That is a makhraj min al fitan. And it is an escape route from tests and trials and tribulations. That the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al As, radiallahu anhumah. And he talked about the fitna in the last days. And he talked about how every time the fitna comes, a new fitna comes, it will make what came before it seem lighter and less significant. He mentioned a tremendous principle for us concerning how we deal with people. And informed us that this principle, that it will save us from fitna. So when we have fitna in our families, fitna in our communities, fitna in our masjid, fitna between brothers, fitna between sisters, then we go to this principle, mentioned in this hadith in Sahih Muslim, hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhuma. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تَجِيُّ الْفِتَنُ فَيُرَقِقُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا تَجِيُّ الْفِتَنُ فَيَقُولُ الْمُؤْمِنُ هَذِهِ مَحْلَكَةِ تَجِيُّ الْفِتَنُ فَيَقُولُ الْمُؤْمِنُ هَذِهِ هَذِهِ and he mentioned about fitna, that fitna will come every time it comes, it will make what came before it seem lighter. Fitna will come every time it comes. The believer, he will say, هَذِهِ مَحْلَكَتِي This is my destruction. The ulama, they mention in, this, in the explanation of this hadith, if you were to look in the statements of the muhaddithin and the explanation of this hadith, they say that the fitna yani, is like amwajul الْبَحْرِ It is like waves in the ocean. It's like a person yani, floating in the middle of the ocean being overtaken by waves. Every time a wave passes, another one that is even larger than it comes. And then after that one, and he survives that one, another one comes. The fitna comes, he says, هَذِهِ مَحْلَكَتِي This is going to be my destruction, this is it. The fitna comes, he says, هَذِهِ هَذِهِ This is it, this is it. Every time the fitna comes, he's for sure. Or she's for sure, that's it. This is going to be the one that does them in. How do you protect yourself from the fitna? Look at the beginning of this hadith before we mention the end of the hadith. The Prophet wasallam said, مَا مِن نَبِي بَعَثُهُ اللَّهُ فِي أُمَّةٍ قَبْلِ إِلَّا كَانَ لَهُ حَقًا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ يَدُلَّ أُمَّتُهُ عَلَى خَيْرٍ مَا يَعْلَمُهُ لَهُمْ وَيُنْذِرُهُمْ شَرًّا مَا يَعْلَمُهُ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ هَذِهِ, وإن هذه الْأُمَّةِ جُعِلَتْ عَافِيَتُهَا فِي أَوَّلِهَا وَسَيُصِيبُ أَخِيرَهَا بَلَاءٌ وَأُمُورٌ تُنْكِرُونَهَا He said that there was never a prophet that was sent to any nation before me except that it was a right that they had upon their prophet that he teach them of every good that he knew of for them and that he warned them of every evil that he knew of for them and verily this ummah he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best times of this Ummah will be its earliest times, its earliest generations. And the latter part of the Ummah will be stricken. Sayusibu bibala'in wa umurin tunkirunaha. And he will be stricken with affliction and matters that you would despise and that you would dislike. Speaking to the companions. Tajiyul fitan. Aikum Sallallahu Tajiyul fitan. The fitna will come. And it will come. Any and every time it comes, it will make what came before it seem lighter to the end of the hadith. What was the end of the hadith? So you have in the hadith of Prophet ﷺ talking about the fitna is going to get worse and worse and worse. And we see it all around us. We see it. We see people and they're being tested. And he was shubuhat and shahawat. And he was doubts and desires. 
doubts and desires that may make them leave from their religion. All the time. All the time. Wallahu al musta'an. And he, it has a very harmful effect upon a person's religion, and sometimes and he, a person's religion doesn't survive it. So he mentioned at the end of the hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the solution? What is the solution? He said, فَمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يُزَحْزَهَ عَنَ النَّارِ وَيُدْخَلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَلْتَأْتِيهِ مَنْ يَتُهُ وَهُوَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَلْيَأْتِي إِلَى النَّاسِ الَّذِي يُحِبُّ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا إِلَيْهِ He said, whoever wants to, so whoever wants to be distanced far away from hell and entered into paradise and let him meet his death while he believes in Allah in the day of judgment and let him deal with people how he would like to be dealt with. Let him deal with people how he would like to be dealt with. That's the answer, the solution to all the problems in the world. Al-Iman. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. The people believe in Allah in the day of judgment. It's a cure for all fitna. It's a solution for all problems. That the people believe in Allah and the day of judgment. And the, and the day of judgment. And they believe in the paradise and the hellfire and the punishment and the grave and so on and so forth. And it has a tremendous effect upon people. And he, nobody has to supervise them and watch over them to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing because they have a raqib. And they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that raqib. They have someone who's watching them and they know that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have al, al wazi dini And they have that which is from the religion that compels them to behave the way that they behave. It's a solution to fitna. That the people believe in Allah in the day of judgment. And that they deal with people how they would like to be dealt with. They deal with people how they would like for Allah to deal with them. And how they would like for people to deal with them. The one who shows mercy to people, Allah will show him mercy. The one who has yani nusr, good will towards the people, wants the good for them, and teaches them the good, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will want the good for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of His taqwa, Allah will allow him to learn more, and learn more, and learn more. The person who forgives, Allah will forgive him. The person who is yani, lenient with those that he loans money to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be lenient concerning his right on the day of judgment with that person. You deal with people how you would want to be dealt with. And you deal with people how you would want Allah to deal with you. So if we ask ourselves a question, what are our rights? What do we know about our rights? And then ask ourselves the question, what do we know about the rights of others? What do we know about the rights of our elders? What do we know about the rights of those who contribute in good, who spent from the wealth, the people who spent from their wealth, yani, fi mashari and khayr, yani, in, the, in those issues, yani, mashari and khayriya, those charitable endeavors, they have rights over us. I wonder, do we know what their rights are? Do we know the rights of the people who spend to keep the mashid open? Who spend to pay the bills? Who spend to keep the food bank going? Who spend? And it's usually in every community you see the people spending, it's three or four people. And it's not because they're the only ones with money, but it's the only ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened up their hearts and has opened up their chest yani, so that when yani, so they don't squeeze the cord until the eagle screams. And they give from their money knowing the statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Abi Kabashat al-Anmari is true when he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a sadaqa does not decrease your wealth whatsoever. Sadaqa does not decrease your wealth whatsoever. What are their rights? Do you know the rights? Those people have rights over you. We don't know the rights of the people. Those people, they have a right that you make dua for them. That's their right. They have, do, they have a right that you speak well of them. And that you don't criticize them. 
We find that from city to city, that in many cases, the people who are spending, they just so happen to be the idara. They happen to be the administration of the master because they care that much. They sacrifice from their time. They're generous with their time. They're generous with their reputation because it's not a, any a popular position to be in, to be the leader. Everybody wants to see, everybody sees what you're not doing and, and, and sees any, what you don't have of good. They don't see the good that you have, they see what you don't have of the good. Any what you're lacking, your, your, your faults, your flaws. You find that people complain about the administrations of the masajid. They don't know those people are the people keeping the masjid running. They have rights over us. What are their rights? Their rights are that we make du'a for them. And then we speak well of them. Did I make that up? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, just what I said. And this was a statement of a Shaykh Abdul Rahman al-Sa'adi. That those who contribute, al-mutabarri'een, fil mashari'a al khayriya and you know, those who spend in charitable endeavors, that this is their right. What the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned when he said, مَنْ صَنَعَ إِلَيْكُمْ مَعْرُوفًا فَكَافِئُوهُ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدْ فَدْعُ لَهُ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدْ فَثْنَ عَلَيْهِ خَيْرًا He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith reported by Bukhayn and Adab al-Mufrad and others. He said, whoever does good for you, then repay him. If you do not have the ability to do so, then make dua for them. If you, and in another narration, if you do not have the ability to do so, then speak well of them. We don't know the rights of the people. What are the rights of our elders? What are the rights of our children? What are the rights of our children? The rights of our children is that we guarantee for them that we guarantee for them everything that they need to survive in their deen and their dunya. You see, most people, when they look at the rights of their children, they think that as long as they are providing a residence for their children to live in, feeding their children, clothing their children, so on and so forth, they are fulfilling the rights of their children. Your children have a right to an Islamic education. Your children have a right to an Islamic education. Your children have a right to be taught this religion. Your children have a right to correct tarbiyah. Your children have a tremendous right upon you. So we wanted to read in the few minutes we have remaining and some of the remaining advices that we started to read last week from a Shaykh Abdullah Jarullah Al Jarullah Hafidhullah Ta'ala in his book Tadkirul Ibad Bi Hukuk Al Aulad. The Shaykh he said That from the rights of the children, or from the obligation of the parents over their children. He said, Hamluhum ala suhbat al akhyar al salihin al ladina araful al haq wa tabu wa tahdiruhum in suhbat al ashrar wa munharifin fi dinihim wa akhlaqihim. He said, Then it is to make sure that your children befriend people who are good and people who are righteous, who know the truth and who follow the truth. Your children befriend other children who are good and who are righteous, who know the truth and who follow the truth. Not that a Muslim child has a friend and while they're with their friend they say that my father doesn't allow me to do such and such and my mother doesn't allow me to do such and such and I can't do this and I can't go here and I can't watch this. And while they're with their friends 
all the rules that their parents have put in place for them go right out the door. Their friend may not know right from wrong or not know enough right from enough wrong. And sometimes children only do what they're supposed to be doing when they're being watched and supervised. Sometimes when a child has a stupid friend, and many of us can relate because growing up as non-Muslims, we had a lot of stupid friends. When a child has stupid friends, he may be a good kid. She may be a good kid. But it's like Ibn Hibban al-Busti, he mentioned in his book, Rawdha to uqala a book about intelligence, and how good character is a sign of intelligence. He said that the harms of hanging out with stupid people is that if their company doesn't harm you, it won't benefit you. But sometimes we as parents, we don't care if our kids have stupid friends. They have friends that are misbehaved and who treat their parents in a way that is not permissible in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the shaykh, he said that it is mandatory upon the parents towards their children to guarantee and to check to make sure that they have righteous friends, friends that are upright, and who know the truth and who follow the truth. And that they warn their children from taking evil people and sinful people as friends. And the children who are deviant in their behavior, deviant in their religion, Find some of the teenage girls. The parents will send them to a school, and he, thinking that, and, he, and without a doubt, sometimes it's a lesser of two evils. You send your children to a school that is run by the Hizbis because the Salafis are shiftless and are fickle, and we don't have our business together, and we don't have schools. Allah Musta'an. And so the teenage girl, she sees the other girls in her school. And in the best scenario, it's a school that doesn't have free mixing, although there's nothing like that in this city. And a, a, a school for teenage, where a teenage girl can go, a Muslim girl can go, and there's not free mixing with boys and men. Allah al musta'an. But in the best case scenario, maybe, a girl can be in a situation where she's in a Muslim school that's not run by people who are, yani, upon the aqeed and the men has ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. Her friend doesn't cover her feet. Her friend doesn't cover her face. Her friend, and he wears a khimar with Tommy Hilfiger jeans and a tight shirt that grabs onto her bosoms. So what happens? She goes out the house one day, you didn't see her, she wasn't wearing socks. It starts with socks. We've seen that happen. A sister, and he says, I don't know of any proof that says I don't have to cover my feet. Somebody says, that's harmless. And it's just her feet. And she probably has any corns and bunions on her feet and stuff anyway. And he's, they're not attractive. And he, what, what does it matter whether, whether or not she covers her feet? There wasn't a difference between the scholars at any time and any place that a woman had to cover her feet, either with a garment that was long enough to cover her feet or by wearing socks. None of the scholars differed over that on the four madhabs. None of them. None of them. We don't know of a single statement of the Sahaba, the Salaf, the Tabi, the Tabi'in, the Tabi Tabi'in that says that the scholars differed over whether a woman had to cover her feet. But she thinks that it's something she has an option in. So it starts with her feet. And we're not saying this theoretically, we're saying this is something that we've seen happen. It starts with her feet, and then she has a baby by a calf for the next year. How did you go from this to that? It reminds us of the statement of, a, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
When Musa said to his people, أَتَسْتَبْدِلُونَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَدْنَى بِالَّذِي هُوَ خَيْرٍ اِحْبِتُوا مِصْرًا فَإِنَّا لَكُمْ مَا سَأَلْتُمْ Will you exchange that which is least, that which is less for that which is, yani in, the, in the place of that which is better? Allah had given the people food, manna wa salwa from the heavens. Food from the heavens that none of the people was eating. The people, they said, we want to go down to the land and see what the people have of lentils and onions and so on and so forth. Musa, he said, will you exchange that which is least in place of that which is better? Go down to any land and you'll find what you're asking for. What did Allah say after that? وَضُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِ مُضِلَّةُ وَالْمَسْكَنَةُ وَبَعُوا بِغَضَبِ مِنَ اللَّهِ He said, and humiliation and ignominy was placed upon them. And they incurred the wrath and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَقْتُلُونَ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَبِمَا كَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ that is because they killed the prophets and the messengers without a right, and because they used to oppress the people. The Shaykh Abdul Rahman Asadi said, Look at how Allah mentioned this and then mentioned that. It started with the people, yani just wanting something that was less beneficial, having low aspirations. These low aspirations led them to medicines, led them to major sins, led them to kufr, led them to shirk, led them to killing the prophets and the messengers, and transgressing against one another and against the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing light in the religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. Indeed, we are going to cast upon you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a weighty and tremendous word. Imam Malik, he was asked about an issue. And he said, La adri, la adri, la adri. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. A man kept asking him and asking him. He said, Look, I don't know. He said, Innaha mas'alatun khafifa, sahla. He said, This is an issue that's light and it's easy. Why you keep saying you don't know? You don't have any answer for me? Fastaghdaba. And he, that upset Imam Malik. He said, Laysa fit bin shayun khafif. There is nothing light in the religion. أَوَلَا سَمِعْتَ قَوْلَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ إِنَّ سَنُلْقِي عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا Haven't you heard the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Indeed, we are going to cast a weighty word upon you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything in the Qur'an, everything in the Sunnah is heavy. It's heavy. So it starts with something light. You take a light, who your children take to be friends. They associate, and he, in the school, any the person that they spend the night at their home do all sorts of things that you know that they would not be allowed to do in your home and you just turn a blind eye is that mudara or is that mudahana and is that diplomacy or is that compromise I and mean, is this something I any mean, that has hikmah in it is a wisdom and you're doing that for the good of your child or are you doing it because you're a coward how will the Muslims ever be successful when they're afraid of their children? How will we be afraid of our children? So the Shaykh, he said, uh, Shaykh Abdullah Jarullah, he said it is mandatory upon the parents to guarantee that their children have righteous friends who know the truth and who follow the truth. And that they warn their children from having evil associates. And those evil associates become bad I mean, accomplices. Any, and you see the people any, in the same jail cell, Muslims, in the same jail cell. Any, they were Muslim children that were playing in the masjid. Like our brother Abu Ways, rahmatullah alayhi, he said, and we see them when they're three and they're four, reciting the Quran and praying like malaika, like angels. And you can't imagine anything more beautiful from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these little Muslim children reciting their fatiha, prostrating, two, three years old. We see it all the time. Little girl, she wants to wear the hijab and be like her mother. And he, the children, they, they, they emulate their parents. And he wants to be the best people they can be. And either three, four year old, they're like that. And when they're 14, 15, 16 year old, they're like shayateen. You can't distinguish between them and the kafir in the street. As a matter of fact, it might be better for you to run into the kafir in the street than to run into some of these people out here and who are upon their whims and their desires. Wallahu al-Musta'an. The Shaykh, he said, 
فكما يقلد الإنسان من حوله في أزيائهم يقلدهم يقلدهم في عمالهم ويتخلق بأخلاقهم قال حكيم نبعني عمن تصاحب أنبئك من أنت الشيخ said so just like you see when people are around other people a lot that they start to resemble them in their clothing and he, you see the person he goes out with Jamaat al-Tabliq he comes back he has and he, a turban maybe has a cone in the middle of it right and he has you know you know the 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 kameez he has you know the sirwal and he he smells like uh curry you know so on and so forth right and he smells he smells like khuruj right that's what he smells like and he smells like he's been a khuruj right you see the person that he's any with some other people yani who take a more what they call a secularist approach to Islam, a secularist type of Islam, even though secularism and Islam and he are as far apart from each other as the East is from the West. And, he, and you see the people that, you know, Islam you know, is something that they do you know, on Friday, and maybe they might pray five times a day. And he, but you see them, they're choked up. You know, they got, as the Sheikh Salai Fozan said, the cross on their neck, that necktie, it's a cross. A necktie is a cross, right? So... That's where it came from, right? So they choked up, got the suit on, right? So just as people resemble people in their appearance that they're around, he said people also resemble people in their behavior and their akhlaq, right? They say, As-sahibu sahibu. As-sahib sahib. Right? One with the sad and one with the seen. As-sahibu sahibu. The sahib, the companion, and he's the one that he sucks you in. He pulls you in, right? He said that a wise person, he said, نَبِئْنِي عَمَّنْ تُصَاهِبْ أُنَبِئُكَ مَنْ أَنْتْ He said, tell me about your friends and I will tell you who you are. Tell me who are your friends and I will tell you who you are. So, any of this is all that we went home with today. Any of this tremendous advice from the Shaykh about any of the uh, friends of your children. This will any have been sufficient for us. Because it's something that as I said, if it's taken lightly, and if it's taken lightly, then it will cause tremendous harm in the Muslim home. It will cause tremendous harm in the Muslim home. And you see children who are disrespectful to their parents, and he sucking the teeth at their parents, giving any cold and mean looks at their parents, and he acting like they don't hear you in the masjid, their parent calls them, Ya Fulan, Ya Ahmed, Ya Muhammad, Ya Omar, Ya Fulan, come here. Come here, the child acts like he don't hear his parent. And he's looking around like he didn't just hear. Everybody in the match had heard your parent call you, right? And he, you see that sometimes if you were to let your children be around these children too much, and he's some children who are like that, that they bring that back into the home. And, he, and that's, that's when they're not even any friends like that. They're just associates in the match. So what about yani, making, you know, allowing your children to just be best friends with somebody just because? And we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. We don't want to any offend somebody's sensibilities. At the cost of what? At the cost of what? Whatever the case. Hada wallahu alam wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa jazakumullahu khairan jazak. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallafiru Allah li wa lakum. Subhanaka Allah, alhamdulillah, shara wa la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu alayhi.